Now, if you are someone who doesn't like spending all this time on your computer editing your photos, what I'm about to show you in today's video might be something that you can put to use, especially in the near future as it continues to improve. And most of you guys know AI is definitely um, poking its head out in the photography world in terms of, you know, Adobe's got generative AI. And there's all sorts of other AI selection tools and other AI tools that can help you to edit better photos. Now, I just recently heard about this and I figured I'd test it out and make a little video on it, but this is going to be Google's Gemini, which uh, as far as I can tell is essentially equivalent to like chat GPT. Um, and you can use this Google Gemini to edit your photo. So you upload your photo and then you tell Google exactly what to do and it edits your photo using AI. Pretty crazy technology. I want to show you how it works, give you my thoughts on it. And obviously this is a feature that they're going to be improving. So it's going to continue to get better in the future. Maybe we'll see this uh, incorporated with some photo editors that you can just type in exactly what you want it to do and it will create the edit for you. So let's jump in there and check this out. It's pretty crazy. Uh, so I'm in Google Gemini. I just Google search like Google Gemini and this loads. Enter a prompt. So what you do is you add file, you upload a file. Now I have a couple photos here. We'll work with this one first. You are limited because you have to use uh, either JPEG or PNG files right now. But in the future, I'm pretty sure they're going to add a raw file compatibility because why wouldn't they in the future? But who knows whether that's coming next month or in 10 years. Um, now, uh, I'll show you how this works. So you open up your JPEG photo. Now this is just my unedited raw file. So you can enter a prompt. So let's just say edit this photo for me. Um, make the, let's do make the sunset pop and be orange in color and make the foreground dark and moody. Um, make the image have a realistic white balance. Now there's obviously a thousand different things that you could tell it to do. Um, this is just what I'm going to put in there, just kind of off the cuff. Uh, if I spend some more time thinking about it, I could probably do it. Now you do have to understand that you are, it's kind of like rolling the casino. Oh, wow. You can see. All right. That's a pretty good start. Um, it's kind of like rolling the dice. So you never know what exactly you're going to get, um, but usually it will produce you something nice. So I really like the way that the sky looks here, but maybe we should say, uh, keep the sky as is, but make the foreground brighter. Let's just stick with that for now. And I might want to add like a little bit of glow in there later. Uh, but you can see I'm doing this live as we go. So this doesn't take very long to do. It's much faster than editing your own image. Yeah, that's starting to look a little bit better there. Let's do make the foreground even brighter and add a subtle vignette. I think I spelled that right. Um, and so you can just keep going down and telling it what to do until your photo gets to exactly what you want it to look like. Uh, now that's looking a little bit better there. Um, let's say remove the vignette. I don't really like what it's doing. And add glow in the sky from the sun. Let's, let's see how this looks. Okay, so you can see it's added some nice glow in the sky. I still don't like the vignette. Let's try this again, completely remove the vignette. So really you have to kind of get lucky here, but you can try a bunch of different things. I do really like how this image is starting to look and it's super easy. Now it's up to you if you think this is photography or not. It's certainly better than just using generative AI, but you know, how much better is it considering you're not really doing anything, but you're just kind of clicking through here. Um, this is looking pretty nice. I don't really like this vignette. If I could go back, I'd probably restart and not tell it to make this vignette because I'm not really a huge fan of it. Um, but otherwise that image is looking pretty decent. Okay. So let's bring in one more photo. We'll bring in this picture of this moose. Um, let's say edit this, edit this photo for me, make the image, um, look like it was professionally edited and moody, but make the moose a little brighter. And I'm curious to see what it will do because we said make it look professionally edited. We'll see what they think professionally edited looks like. This image doesn't really need a lot of adjustments to begin with. So we'll see if it kind of overcooks it. Um, you know, that's not looking too bad other than it's just too dark. Uh, increase the exposure of the image by two stops and we'll see how that looks. Um, but I mean, it's done a nice job. It made it dark. Like I said, it brightened the moose. 
uh, darken the background. And then once we do this, yeah, so, I mean, that's already looking a lot better in there. So it's, you can see how easy this is to use. I mean, we created this image and then we created that other image in just a few different prompts. If you're someone that doesn't like image editing, um, this definitely might be something that should be on your radar. Now, this is at the moment not replacing anything for a professional editor or someone who's really serious about editing. Um, really, this feature is something that's in its very, very early stages. So I'm not gonna say that this is going to like obliterate Photoshop or Lightroom. I've seen some photographers say, oh, Photoshop and Lightroom are done, you can just use this. There's a lot of limitations when it comes to this. Obviously, you can see as I put prompts in, it's pretty hit or miss on how well they work. In addition to that, when you download these images, so I uploaded them as uh, like 9,500 pixels on the wide side with my 60 megapixel camera. Um, when you take them out, it only exports 1200 megapixels on the wide side or give or take. And you can ask it to increase the resolution, but it can only go so far. So you can't get a super high resolution photo. So this isn't gonna work if you're gonna like print something, but definitely it would work for posting it on social media. It would really create a nice image. Now you're also a little bit limited because you can't upload a raw file. So Gemini doesn't have all of the capabilities that you have with a raw file of pushing and pulling the sliders. That being said, I could definitely see this improving in the future. I could see this even being something that uh, Photoshop implements into Photoshop where you just type in the contextual task bar and you just say, you know, add more contrast to the image or add contrast to the highlights or um, whatever, just, just speed up the workflow. So you can simply just type a prompt. Now it certainly isn't quite as fun because you don't actually get to do the editing. You don't get to do the fine tuning or just telling the program to do that. But if you're someone who doesn't like editing your photos, this could really replace photo editing, um, for pretty much everybody that doesn't demand really high precision in their edits. If you're someone who just casually wants to edit your photos, you can do that here. Um, and you can also upload multiple photos. So if you had like a set of photos, you could have them all edited together. Additionally, if you were doing like portraits or weddings or something, maybe they would have a feature where you can edit a whole gallery. I could see all of this coming in the future. Um, so I'm curious to know what your guys' thoughts are after seeing this. Are you worried that this is a problem for photography? Are you fine with photographers using this, especially if the software improves? Is this not really photography anymore if you are not editing your own photos? I know for me, I'm gonna continue editing my own photos because I love the process of doing editing, pushing and pulling the brights, the darks in my image. But I know for a lot of you guys out there that don't like sitting in front of the computer, something like this could be a viable option in the future. Let me know what you think down below in the comments. Make sure that you leave me a like and a subscribe to help this video reach more people and help me to continue to grow my channel. Really, really appreciate you guys being here. My name is Austin James Jackson. Thank you guys so much. I'll see you next time.